Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at derived pricing and revenue lifecycle management. This is a new feature available as of summer 24. So what is derived pricing? For those that know Salesforce CPQ, it's similar to percent of total products in Salesforce CPQ. It's going to let you calculate the price of a product, the derived product based on another product, the source product, or the quote total. It's going to let you calculate the price of the product as a percentage of another product or the quote total. It's going to also let you use some functions and formulas, max, min, a percentage of either the list price, the net unit price, or the subtotal of your product. All right, let's go and take a look in Salesforce at an example. All right, in Salesforce, let's look at this example. I've already added the model tree bundle and I've added the warranty product, which is set up as a percent of total product using derived pricing. In this case, I've set it up as 10% of the total of the model tree product with a minimum of 2,500. So if we look at this right now, list price for the car is $35,990. I've set it up to a quantity of two for a total of 67,000. So if we look at the waterfall for the derived pricing product, open it up, we see the derived price 67, 03, and 20. That's calculated as 10% of the total price of my product. Now, if we modify the discount on our model tree and calculate, we're going to get the updated pricing for the warranty as 10% of the total price. Again, now it's 59.58. And if we are very aggressive with discount, let's call it 90% on our product, the price is going to recalculate. Now, 10% of that new 74.48 total price would be $748, roughly, right, on my 10%. But because we have a minimum of 2,500, now the derived price is 2,500. All right, what is required to use derived pricing in Salesforce Revenue Lifecycle Management? First, you wanna make sure that your pricing procedure has the derived price pricing element added to it. Then you can create a derived pricing product, create its price book entry, and then create a derived price entry. We'll jump back into Salesforce and have a look at how we can do all of those things. All right, first, let's have a look at the pricing procedure. So that's our pricing procedure that's active in this current environment couple things we need to check on. So first, in the pricing setting of your pricing procedure, you want to make sure that the is derived variable is mapped to the derived pricing attribute that's going to let it know whether it is a derived pricing product or not. And then you want to make sure that within your waterfall, you've added the derived price pricing element, and you need to map all the default variables that are available to so the 10 input variables and the two output variables need to be mapped. I'll put a link to how that needs to happen and what needs to be mapped in the description below. All right, once you've made sure that your pricing procedure is updated to support derived pricing, you can go in the product management app and create your derived pricing product. Let's go in there. All right, so in the product catalog management app, go to the product tab. We can create a new product. So the first product we had created for testing was the warranty for the model tree. Let's create the one for the model X. So new product as you would initially, if you've got, we'll go through this one quickly, but if you've got any questions on how you would create this. We've got a full video on how to create products in RLM. All right, so what, all right, once you have all the values on your product, you can hit save. Now you wanna first create your product selling model option for that warranty product. Let's say that it's gonna be a yearly subscription. So we'll set it to term based yearly and we'll set the default expiration policy again, save. Back to our product. Now we wanna select our price book entries. Let's create the price book entry, refer to the product selling model we just created, term-based. List price should be zero for this because it's gonna be calculated based on other and we wanna make sure that the is derived checkbox is checked on our price book entry. Once that's done, go back to your product. All right, now that your product is fully set up, go back to the product catalog homepage. You wanna make sure that this gets added into your catalog. So let's go to whichever catalog you need to modify it, the relevant category, let's put it in the SUV category for our use case here. Let's add the product, warranty model Y. All right, so the product is created, it's added, so it's gonna be available for quoting once we've synced the pricing. One last step before we actually do this is you wanna look for in the menu for derived prices to create the derived pricing entry for that new product. So on that list view, you wanna hit new, all right, a couple things on this one. Derived pricing scope can be either transactional, non-transactional, or both. Transactional means that the pricing only cares about 
other products that are on the current quote. Non-transactional is going to look at existing assets on the customer account, and both will look at the total of products that are on the current quote and that exist on assets on that customer's account. So let's go with transactional for now. Pricing source can be either the header or the product. Header means that it will use the quote total as the total value that you're going to compare against. We'll use a product because we want to calculate against a specific product. Now choose your price book. We'll choose standard price book for this example. The derived product is the warranty product we just created. Warranty model Y. Your source product is going to be the model Y itself. And now you want to input your formula into how you're going to calculate the percent of total or the derived pricing of your warranty product. So you can again use either the list price, the net unit price, or the subtotal. So let's use net unit price times. 0.15 so 15 percent of unit price is going to be the pricing for that product it's going to be effective from let's call it july 1st effective too if there's an end date to your derived price and it's saved all right now all the setup is done you want to make sure that you sync the pricing data go to setup look for pricing salesforce pricing setup it's sync pricing data all right, once your sync pricing data job has completed, you can go back to your quote. Got a new quote here with the Model Y already added to it. You can go to Browse Catalogs to add the warranty product. Choose your catalog. Next. All right, scroll down to your new product. Going to select and add the warranty for the Model Y. Save quote. The product is going to get added on. And it's going to calculate by default to 15% of our current price. Again, as we did in our initial example, we could discount our top level product. <clears throat> and the discount will be reflected in the percent of total for the Model Y warranty as it's going to go down because the parent product has gone down. All right, this was derived pricing in the revenue lifecycle management. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.